zone above Everest, I really felt nervous. And doing the ride that we've done, uh, coming to the end of that and feeling really tired and fatigued and descending all those descents in the, the descents in the dark, same feeling. And it's the summit of Everest with the cloud coming off it right in the middle of the screen. Just howling up there it would be. I was using our oxygen mask properly for the first time at Camp 3. I'm hurting now, I'm really hurting. I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm tired, my eyes just want to Go to sleep. I saw Paul and Fiona, his wife, on TV, and I thought, hey, those guys are in the bunches with us and, and racing and stuff. So we um, were on this Thursday night loop called the Tour of Burbs in Melbourne, and I saw Paul, and I'm like, hey, you're the guy that just climbed Everest. So we're about to set off, it's just on 4 a.m. Um, it's hopefully going to be a lovely day weather-wise, um, but it's going to be a really tough day. Perhaps, probably, I don't know, it may even be harder than any of the days on Everest. I don't know. I really don't know. I've never done a ride this long. First hill, eh? Send those. You know, if you're struggling to get to Camp 1, it's, it's hard to comprehend getting to camp three, let alone camp four, let alone the summit. And you're just barely hanging in there. I guess we just really focused on the next target of you know, the next camp. I feel good. We've done 1,500 meters of climbing, coming up on three hours. This is kind of like what we would do on a regular big day for us normal riding, but yeah, it's, it's fine so far. Time is going by quick. I saw the sunrise, or well, the sun just cracking the surface, and I remember thinking, oh, fantastic. I've made it through the night. The coldest part of the day is over, and I'm pretty, getting pretty close to the summer, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. So we've just gone nine o'clock, 85 k in, 2,200 meters climb. Climbing up Cold Little Fukla, I guess a bit like our uh, final day or any of the days on Everest, you don't know what's ahead, how your body will cope with the, the stress and strain or altitude or knees hold up on a bike, cramps, so yeah, I don't know. A hair under 3,000 meters. Been gone six hours, 45 minutes. It's 11 in the morning, 113k. So that's, that's a lot of climbing for 113k. But I don't know. I feel, I feel good. I'm just conscious that I've been told like the fatigue creeps up on you. The last day is only 850 meters of climbing from Camp 4, but you know, that takes 12, 15 hours round trip to do that. So you are taking three steps, and then after three steps, you are completely out of breath. It's a long way, and yeah, we're, we're just about halfway. Uh, nine hours, it's a, yeah, a long way, but just thinking back into the top of that next hill and thinking now about getting through this we've got a big gravel section now and just want to get through that safely and uh, in one piece Sherpa had caught up to another two climbers. A bit like riding a bike, we were, the four of us were climbing together in a nice pace, just like going up a mountain. Oh, 
Well, we are, how many K here? We have 5,300 meters, 180K, it's 5 p.m. We have 2,000 meters left to go and I can kind of mentally deal with that. That's like just a regular big day, a big Saturday for me. I haven't kind of got that tonight, so. Six thousand six hundred. That's uh, almost the height of Camp Two on Mount Everest. But I think the real climb is going to start at eight thousand meters, and uh, hopefully, I'm still there. A few steps, rest, catch your breath. A few steps, catch your breath, and you're doing that. And so I put up. We were four of us, all going at the same pace. But then suddenly, like just must be just minutes after that, suddenly the going got really hard, and I could not. I, I just couldn't recover my breath. Sort of in my head, that 2,000 meters left to go is just staying. Just like when you're getting dropped on a climb, there's a one meter gap, two meter gap, ten meter gap, and then they're gone. We are at uh, 7,800 meters we have climbed. We're at the start of the climb to Plateau Glier. And I think it will be, it's our last big climb and I think it will probably be our hardest climb. And I've looked at this little reservoir where the oxygen flows into and there's a bag that normally moves in and out as you breathe and the bag was totally stuck. And then immediately I realized there is no oxygen flowing in. We have uh, 8528 meters done. And uh, what time is it? 12.30 a.m. So we've and that was a, that's a really tough climb. Right? I remember thinking I'm in so much trouble. How on earth are we gonna get down alive? We've just hit 8848. Meters, 8,848. The whole way we didn't know if we would actually end up with uh, 8,848 meters. And, uh, we've done you it. You did good, Pa. We've done it. I'm so lucky. Another Sherpa came off the summit. He was climbing on his own. And then he said to me, he said, you can have my bottle. There's not much oxygen left in there, but I can go down without it. Uh, people have asked me, you know, later, did you feel um, sad or unlucky that he didn't make the summit, but no, I was the luckiest person alive. I did not care about the summit at all. Woohoo! Hey. Done. Mate. <laughs> that was impressive, Whitey. Mate. Yeah, that was an impressive day. Did you have any doubts you were going to make it? Uh, you just never know, eh? You know. I thought you'd think, uh, you know, 100 meters from the summit of Everest, I thought I was going to make it. I thought I was <laughs> fine. And uh, I thought I would be fine. Yeah. And then, boom, you know, yeah. uh, I didn't make it. So, yeah, same here. You know, we could have, you're tired, fatigued, you could have. What was your lowest and, point of today? My lowest point was when, it was early on when we had done maybe. 80k and I just sort of realized wow we have so far to go yeah I couldn't deal with 3,000 meters to go yeah that I was your last not, point I could not yeah no no I'm ready for uh, I'm ready for bed good shower <laughs> bed I'm straight to bed in my kit the original idea was beers at the end but no way no nah, forget the beer tomorrow <laughs> yeah so it's, it's interesting how I can listen to the story of how you failed, but we, I don't even know if I've ever heard the story of how you've succeeded, right? <laughs> failure. What, yeah, like what... Um, Maybe there's more to be learned from failure than success. Yeah. 